got very good arms. He didn't fall? Inconceivable! You keep using the word. I do not think it means what you think it means. It's been a very busy news Friday here at Thinking Critical YouTube. Definitely caught me off guard. I'll be playing catch up uh, through the weekend, so I won't be able to cover everything here, right here, right now. But today I am going to cover the news that X Corp is finally a real deal. It's no longer a rumor that Marvel is going to be producing that. There has been some changes to what we knew was going to be the creative team. And uh, in my opinion, the changes aren't that good. Now, I do want to apologize. I accidentally double dropped my uh, my videos earlier in the day, and I had to delete one and repost it later. My wife and I decided to celebrate Valentine's Day a day uh, two days early. We, we went out. I actually got a, a 500 gram steak. Turns out that's almost 18 ounces. I finished every single bit of it. I don't normally get to eat steak here in the Philippines, so I was very excited for that. And uh, I, I ended up screwing up the <laughs> the release time. Hopefully it won't happen in the future, but based on well, you know, the channel performance, I'm going to do it a couple more times this year at least. Now getting back into the details, Teeny Howard is the new architect of X Corp. I don't know. We've been talking about it here on the channel. Is the Hickman influence waning as time goes by with this X-Men relaunch? It certainly feels that way. This, this further indicates that maybe that is, in fact, the case. Obviously, we're going to get to some details before I do that. If you're enjoying the content here on the channel and you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. Give me a thumbs down if you don't. Either way, I want to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts on Tinny Howard taking over for x -Corp? Is this the creative team that you want? Now let's get directly into it. Like I said, the, the writer for x -Corp is going to be Tinny Howard, who's been on Excalibur since day one, was the primary architect for the Ten of Swords crossover. Obviously, she was doing the other world story. Well, kind of Jonathan Hickman had the Krakoa, Arako, Okara story the original four horsemen story they didn't really meld very well in my opinion it's probably one of the and more more enormous failings of tennisors that and the, the fact that it was so long and strung out probably didn't need to be quite as long as it was certainly already covered that here on the channel the artist is going to be alberto Fochi. originally it was announced it was essentially carmen canero the longtime artist on captain marvel was the one that kind of announced it and dropped the you know, drop that little hint out there, and we hadn't heard anything since. It feels like this this news has just been sitting out there for like a year and a half, been waiting for, the, for it to finally come through. Now, we do have information on that. Let's get directly into the details that we have just in the solicit solicitations for X Corp. This is going to be coming out, I believe, on May 12th. The deals have been made. Mutant kind is safe on Krakoa as the reign of X continues. What are the wants of the mutants who have everything? Leading the charge is X Corporation, headed by CXOs Monet, St. Croix, and Warren Worthington, a duo as cutthroat and ruthless in the boardroom as they are on the battlefield. But X Corp needs more than just its figureheads, as Monet sets out to staff their team with some of the brightest and most deviant minds in mutant kind. Warren finds himself in a tense confrontation with one of Krakoa's first allies who wants to know the truth. On Angel's wings, will X Corp crash or soar? This will be a Monet and Angel Forward uh, series. They're definitely going to be the leaders of the X Corp. So, who do we think is the the first the first ally that's going to want to know the truth? It's not Wakanda. They weren't really allies. They were kind of being Switzerland. They were playing neutral. It certainly isn't like the UN because they were essentially like spying on them. They even tried to like get the drop on on the X Men and kill Charles Xavier while they were working with Zeno. So, I, I think that's an interesting question. Now, Teeny Howard, the architect, the new architect, some might say, of, of the X-Men universe, did say that she had a bit of a part to play in this. This was her quote. We shelved the book for a time. I had ten of swords on my plate immediately, and I decided that X-Corp existed quietly in the background, there for us to debut when we had the right story to tell, the right public offering to make, if you will. Empire X-Men gave me a chance to test drive some of the earliest concepts. Angel and Monet as dual CXOs, Jamie Madrox by their side, and the cleaning up of some of Charles Xavier's portfolio. Since then, I've reworked the book entirely. And you'll know exactly why you've waited until now. 
to see what they're up to. I've got a corporate pass myself, and it's all going into this book. X Corp, we're simply superior. Well, there you go. Teeny Howard says she's got a corporate pass, and you know you can depend on that. She's going to nail this X Corp book. I'm a bit more skeptical. I obviously have not enjoyed Excalibur. In fact, I've, <laughs> I've really not enjoyed it. And it appears from what we're seeing from the sales numbers that are finally kind of rolling out, a lot of people feel the same way. You might have expected that Ten of Swords would be a windfall for the X-Men franchise. It spans so many issues. It went basically across the entire line. But that ended up being not the case. Any bumps that were experienced from Ten of Swords were very, very minor. The bleeding continued immediately afterwards. The sales on the entire X-Men line are really depressed. And I think a lot of people are put off with the tone of the line. It does not feel very cohesive. And like I mentioned, you know, during the Ten of Swords, it does feel like there are competing narratives. And it does feel like T.D. Howard, the shenanigans going over on an other world where it's essentially literary nonsense, are winning out on the day. You would think it would be Jonathan Hickman and his ideas and his long-term plans that would be leading the charge, guiding the efforts of the entire X-Men franchise. Right? He's the head of X. That's not what it feels like, at least not to me. And I think for a lot of X-Men readers... They kind of feel the same way. Uh, there, there's another quote from Teeny Howard, and it, it, I don't know, it feels like bad news if you kind of read between the lines. This is also what she said. Hello, some of you have been waiting for a while for this book, and I'm the one to blame. I first pitched this story because I absolutely love the weird corporate world within Marvel Comics, specifically books like New X-Men, All New X-Factor, and the history of what the X-Corporation was before. But in a new mutant era of gates and deals, x Corp's corporate embassy is a bit obsolete, and I refuse to sell you guys on anything I wouldn't buy myself. Well, technically, I imagine she probably would buy Excalibur, so that part right there does not fill me with very much confidence. But there's other part up here. I absolutely love the weird corporate world within Marvel Comics. Well, it appears that she really, really loves the really weird aspects of other world and all the things that, that come along with Excalibur and has completely embraced those aspects of the world while kind of throwing out any elements that might make it more serious in nature and fit in with the actual X-Men line. So I imagine she will be embracing all the weird little corporate-isms in the Marvel world and expanding on all that while making this very much a joke of a book. That's just the way I think that it will likely go. And worst of all, it just leads to more watering down of the X-Men line. If the X-Men line was really strong right now, if they were bulwarked by awesome sales on X-Men, Wolverine, X-Force was still up there, you know, maybe at like 50, Excalibur was sitting into that 45 to 50 range, hey, it might not be the, the worst time to do some expansion. Like apparently you've got the line right, people are excited, the enthusiasm is, is still there, but the enthusiasm has been waning. I think a lot of X-Men readers, specifically Readers that enjoyed House of X, Powers of Ten, which was an enormous success, feel well, kind of bamboozled. Like maybe they were sold a bill of goods, and this feels like further confirmation or maybe further evidence that they were sold a bill of goods. And that's too bad because it really felt like this next era of X-Men was going to be special. It was going to be something, something that was going to be sitting on bookshelves in 20 years waiting for the next generation of, of readers to be discovered. But... With the way that everything's gone, I, I don't. I just don't see that being the case. You know, now we're getting this Way of X series by Simon Spurrier. Are you excited to see a character like Night Nightcrawler turn, turn his back on his faith and a lot of his character history, kind of go completely against what he stood for for decades now? I'm not excited about that. Are you excited for this X Corp book? You can see the wacky world of Marvel corporate, you know, within the X Men universe as Monet and Angel and Madrox make shifty deals to sell mutant drugs. Got to get the books clean for Charles Xavier. I guess his portfolio just isn't up there. But the good news is, Jeannie Howard's got corporate experience. Well, as far as I know, she's also a witch. And all that magic bullshit didn't really help. Ten of Swords stand up and do very well. It was still stupid, even though she had plenty of experience within that realm. 
I don't know. You're going to have to 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 sell this on a different angle. Now, I do want to mention. I feel bad for Carmen Carnero, obviously a longtime artist of Marvel Comics. She was recently announced as one of their Stormbreakers, the next generation of great talent. Been at Marvel for like eight years. <laughs> Specifically, been like the lead artist on Captain Marvel, one of like their most powerful character according to Marvel for quite a long time. And it felt like this was going to be the next like iteration of her journey at Marvel Comics, maybe kind of a bigger break. She might have actually gotten lucky in all of this because I don't see X Corp going anywhere. The first few issues will do very well for the speculators. There will be lots of variant covers. There will be lots of incentive programs to basically force retailers to order this. And then it will drop down to 20 or less within five issues. This is not going to be a success. It is far too watered down right now. So perhaps this all ended up working out for Carmen Cornero in the end. We did get some sample art from from uh, Alberto Fochi. I don't know. Warren Worthington and Monet St. Croix look very cleaned up and businesslike. <laughs> is that supposed to be exciting? It's very generic stuff. I don't imagine that they were trying to let too much out of the bag, at least angels flying of course he's got wings so you imagine he was doing that but that's about the most exciting thing that you're getting in these sample pages do i think the art's amazing no not particularly do i think it's bad well i'm gonna need some more i'm gonna need some more evidence it doesn't look great i'll tell you that i don't know the, the further we get into dawn of x now into reign of x the more depressing it gets feels like Every announcement is a further step away from everything that made House of X Powers of 10 special. What, what made it feel like we are entering a new day, like something that had like li literally endless possibilities in all the amazing places and all the seeds have been planted that we, we were going to go with Jonathan uh, Hickman and his hand-picked team. But it, it feels like Jonathan Hickman's hand has left the wheel. It's the Jordan White show. With Teeny Howard, you know, as his backseat driver. I don't know, I might be wrong, but it certainly feels like her influence grows by the month at, at uh, X Men. And I don't think that that's good for anybody. It's not good for Marvel Comics because the sales are going to continue to decline. It's not good for X Men fans because the stories are going to continue to be diluted, continue to be substandard. It's going to be continue to deviate from. The House of X, Powers of Ten, like kind of story arcs that everyone was excited about. Certainly not good for the other creators because these books are going to get canceled sooner. And it's not good for Marvel Studios because none of this stuff is ever going to make a good movie. Do you want to see Ten of Swords in a movie? Do you want to see it in a cartoon? I don't want to see it in a GIF. It was bad. It does. That's not going to translate to anything. It was. It was stupid shenanigans. It's not like fun literary nonsense like Alice in Wonderland. It was just an enormous waste of time. Do I think X Corp will also be an enormous waste of time? Yes. Will I review the first issue? Of course. I review the first issue of everything associated with X-Men. We have a special place in our heart for X-Men here at Thinking Critical YouTube. We just recently, I wouldn't, we didn't abandon this week in X-Men, but we're not gonna cover all the, the, the issues, even the ones that we read. We're gonna talk about the X-Men issues, because people are still interested in that. We're going to talk about the Wolverine stuff. Other than that, we're going to expand our horizons and talk about other things. Although this Saturday, or I'm sorry, this Sunday, Doc and I are going to be talking about the recent interview with Jordan White. With I believe it was News Newsroom. I might have that one incorrect. He doesn't come across as exceptionally competent. The fact that X-Corp and the, the creative team is headed up by Tini Howard also makes him look that rather incompetent. I, just, I find it hard to believe that, that these are Jonathan Hickman decisions anymore i think he would have seen the writing on the wall the excalibur is bad ten of swords was a bomb and the sales are exceptionally depressed they're not where they should be marvel comics has dropped the ball and in my opinion they continue to drop the ball as we get the further into now reign of x what do you guys think that's essentially the, the news coming out of marvel comics we've got a new x corp series coming out in may tini howard Alberto Fochi on art. We're gonna see Monet and and Angel head up the the X Corporation office. We're gonna be doing some some deals to getting Charles 
Is Xavier's portfolio right? Got to get them numbers up. Those numbers are weak. <laughs> I like Jamie Madrox. Well, I like the characters. It's just the writing has been so bad. And, you know, just the way that, that Tini talked about it gives me bad vibes. I love the weird corporate world. Oh, no. You love the weird shenanigans over another world, and that did not work out for anybody. We shall see. Definitely want to hear from you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.